Bakhtabad, ladies and gentlemen, my confiding trust in some of my young associates has been badly shaken. <laughs> when a few weeks ago, Dr. Ravitch, Mike Bonson, Frank Spencer, Dave Sabiston, came in and said that prior to the meeting of the American Surgical that a few of the Westerns would, might stop by Baltimore. Uh, I had no idea as to the extent of this, this gathering. This is Old Man's Week at the Southern Hotel. On um, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, the gerontologists met here. <laughs> and uh, on Saturday night was Old Man Blowups. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, used to be a hotel for young people. For example, uh, Bill and Francis Reinhardt spent part of their honeymoon here. <laughs> <laughs> At the meeting of the gerontologists, uh, the close friend of my superb surgeon, Cap Colston, <laughs> Dr. R., who is the president of the American Medical Association, said that we lag behind the Russians because of compulsory early retirement in this country. Now, I've given a lot of uh, thoughts uh, to this question of old age, of retirement. And as you know, there are uh, different opinions about it. In a well-known address entitled The Fixed Period, Sir William Osler uh, propounded two fixed ideas. The first of these was the comparative uselessness of men above the age of 30. He said if you discard the achievements of those over 30, that we'd be practically where we are today. <laughs> and his second fixed idea had to do with the absolute uselessness of men above 60, saying that incalculable benefit would result if men stop work at this age. He said that a large proportion of evils may be traced to sexagenarians. At 60, he advised uh, retirement with a year spent in contemplation followed by a large dose of chloroform. <laughs> Subsequently, he relented slightly <laughs> and said that a teacher's life uh, should be divided into three uh, areas, study to 25, research uh, to 40, profession to 60, and then retirement on a double allowance. I think this latter idea is a particularly <laughs> good one. <laughs> now, there is an opposite viewpoint that might be expressed, else I'll try all the commotion uh, about increasing the length of life. Methuselah begat a son at the age of 187. <laughs> And he lived 782 years after this. <laughs> what two other old men did is described in a verse by James Naylor. King David and King Solomon led merry, merry lives with many, many lady friends and many, many wives. But when old age crept on them, with many, many qualms, 
King Solomon wrote the Proverbs, and King David wrote the Psalms. <laughs> such as Lanark and the stethoscope, Lyme and Martin, anesthesia, Lysthana, sepsis, banning and pest, and insulin gen general vaccination and the early important work of early in the Bernard. But there are some people who, after the age of 60, have accomplished worthwhile things. And I refer to people such as Meltzer, our Dr. J.J. Abel, Sir Frederick Hopkins, Dr. Walter Cannon, whose son Brad is here tonight, Pavlov, and quite a few others. And some even, some of my friends have said that the Toastmaster tonight is doing the best work of his life. <laughs> I met to Professor Pavlov when he was 80, and in reply to a question, uh, he answered that he thought the greatest medical scientist this country has produced was Dr. John J. Abel. I've had uh, the good fortune to have had at least a slight acquaintanceship with a number of the departed greats. And I would say that probably my greatest admiration is for Dr. Halsey. But I think the, the life of Dr. Hugh Hampton Young probably excites the greatest interest. So William Osler said that success in life uh, depends on getting what one wants and being satisfied with it. Well, certainly Dr. Young was quite uh, successful and quite happy. And I was reading the other day again an addendum to the last uh, paragraph in his autobiography. Diary, September the 18th, 1940. My birthday is his 73rd birthday. Up at 6.30, Usual exercises, excellent coordinated movement, cold shower, light breakfast, dashed to the hospital, began operating at 8.15. Interesting cases, one from Cuba and one from Haiti. Operative notes dictated while dressing and coming down elevator. By motor for fishing grounds on Belvedere shows at 1 o'clock, fine afternoon fishing, by motor to Washington to attend an important conference. Hamburg and beer in Ralph, to bed at midnight, and his prayer was, thanks, dear God, for manifold blessings that saved me during my first 70 years. Please make the sub second 70 more fruitful. <laughs> so that perhaps even he was not quite or totally satisfied. <laughs> 